Hey there, good people. I'm the Cripple Critic, and today I'm going to talk about Street Fighter V. So yeah, I know the game has been out for a while, but with the release of the actual story mode a few weeks ago, I figure it's good enough time as any to review the game as a whole, despite how Capcom originally released it. So first, I think I should address the elephant in the room, and I mean that the game has a lot of problems that have very little to do with the controls or the gameplay. A lot of reviewers have probably already discussed the problems in greater detail, but I feel like if I didn't mention the problems at least a little bit, I'd be kind of opting out of reviewing the game, you know, honestly, so here it goes. Basically, Capcom released Street Fighter V in an unfinished state. They claimed that unlike in the past, the game would be released, and then afterwards they would release free DLC continuously, when in reality they were just giving us content that should have been in the game already like the story mode that took five months to be put in. When the game first released, it only had a two-player versus mode, a training mode, and a mode called survival mode, which was basically you competing for a high score using uh, perks each round. It didn't have a story mode to speak of, and the challenges and in-game shop weren't available for a few months. More concerning for me is that it seemed like Capcom was catering solely to online gamers, with Street Fighter V, which was kind of a shame since I rarely play online. You're required to be signed into Capcom servers all the time when you're playing the game. Well, technically you can sign out and play the game offline, except that you're not going to be able to keep any of the experience, or in-game currency, or any of the items and rewards that you've earned, so it makes it kind of pointless to play offline. This wouldn't have been so bad if it wasn't for their servers being so unstable, especially after the first two weeks of the release of the game. There were times when I was playing in the first few weeks that I would be kicked off every 10 minutes, and I wasn't even playing online with other people. There was a really weird glitch that happened to me early on, where I was playing in maps and then suddenly I go back to the main menu. I start noticing that some weird things are different about my character and my account. Uh, my currency wasn't the same, and some of the in-game items and rewards were different. Then I noticed that my name wasn't even the same. Somehow, I was transferred to someone else's account. Not really sure how. It was mostly just weird, but it definitely didn't make me feel safe to use their in-game shop with, you know, real money. So yeah, extremely frustrating. But anyway, I guess I'll get into the controls, because I think that's actually something Street Fighter V did well, at least for a fighting game. So there's the usual stuff, like volume and brightness and subtitles, but there's also other things like changing the language. You can change the audio back to the original Japanese, but in my experience, you won't really understand either of them. There's a variety of options you can change in the training mode particularly for the dummy character where you can change whether it can guard or recover health, but that's to be expected really. What I really appreciate is being able to fully customize all of your battle moves in Street Fighter V. This includes even certain combos that can be customized to just one button. There are also different presets you can choose, but just being able to change all of your attack buttons is really useful, and it really surprises me that this doesn't happen more often in fighting games. With the gameplay this time, it seemed like Capcom made it a lot simpler to do more complicated combos. Uh, like I said before, you can make certain combos just one button if you like, uh, and I thought this was a lot easier compared to uh, earlier entries in the series. There's plenty of characters to choose from, old and new, and Capcom says that they'll update with new characters uh, in the coming months. I was surprised to find that I had a lot easier time playing the grappler types in Street Fighter V, and I mean the bigger characters that have close quarters combat, like Zangief and Birdie, which is different than my usual favorite types, like the zoning types. You can get rewards, like items and costumes, by using the in-game currency. To get more in-game currency, you have to beat more matches and complete the story mode. You can buy several of these things in the shop by using the in-game currency, but later you can also use real money if you want. So on to the story. Uh, the story, if I'm being honest, there actually was a bare-bones story mode included in the first release of the game, 
but it felt more like a tutorial for the characters, and you can beat it in less than 45 minutes. The full story mode was released several months later, and was much more extensive, with fully rendered cutscenes, and it took me about four and a half hours to beat. The story for Street Fighter V is bonkers. It's so over the top, it's silly, and but I mean, you, you'd be used to it if you've played any of the other Street Fighter games. Uh, if you're familiar with the sort of anime, you know, action over the top sort of style, then you'll understand the kind of story they're doing. But it is really crazy. I think it's a good thing, though. As far as I can tell in the story, the evil satellite organization uh, launches the seven artificial satellites uh, known as the Black Moons. Uh, they detonate and trigger high altitude electromagnetic pulses. Uh, then the good guys have to travel around the world and find these weird test pieces in order to gain control again. And that's about as far as I can figure out. The story bounces you back and forth between good guys and bad guys, and you'll probably not understand what's going on, even if you've played other games in the series. But in my opinion, it's so much fun, and brings a lot of personality to some of the characters, especially newcomers like Fang and Rashid. The cutscenes look great, with lots of vibrant colors, and I'd say the dialogue is super silly and sometimes nonsensical, but with the tone you can tell it wasn't meant to be taken seriously, which is good. It's just crazy to me that Capcom thought that story mode wasn't needed, at least with the initial release. It was so much fun and added a lot, and I really would have gave, you know, a lot more credit to the game if this was added originally to the first release. But there you have it. Despite all the technical flaws, I really think that underneath all of that, there's a good fighting game. It's kind of baffling to see such big missteps with Capcom, especially when you look at games like Mortal Kombat and even lesser games like Blaze Blue do things so much better with their story. I just hope that Capcom learns from their mistakes, uh, and I do think there's a lot to enjoy from this game, especially now that it's actually finished. Well, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you later.